Welcome back. It's still, of course, TV3 New Day. We're live on TV3. And yes, we're still celebrating 22 years of excellence. And to remember that at every point in time for the next 22 days, you, our viewer, of course, will be winning something. So look out for that. I can't wait to see who wins what. But anyways, it's time for health. Um, and today we're discussing cancer. As we all know, it is the month of October, which is slated for breast cancer awareness. Now, before we even zero in on breast cancer, we think it's necessary that we educate you generally about cancer, which, by the way, is the leading cause of death amongst people across the world. Uh, as we speak, in 2018, about 9.6 million deaths were recorded. And if we come to breast cancer, it's the second leading uh, cause of cancer deaths amongst women in the world. And so joining me today, I have Dr. Priscilla Apia, and uh, she actually runs a breast cancer uh, campaign. She's an advocate for that. And so it's good that we have her here so she can educate us more. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Bella. I'm Interesting fine. that we've met on the set today because I've been following your post on social media, and I realized that you've done quite some extensive work on mm -hmm. educating people on breast cancer. Quite recently, you were, were you in uh, Ibri? Um, During a walk? Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. So I think I saw your team there as well. But first up, tell us about cancer. I mean, for it to be the leading cause of death over these years and, you know, not declining, that seems to be a big problem. Okay. So thank you for having me Welcome. here. I want to thank hi to everybody. Um, first of all, my initiative is on cervical cancer yeah. and then also breast cancer. Breast cancer, yeah. When we say cancer... We basically mean that there's a cell in the body that's refusing to die mm. or is growing too fast. Okay. Normally, um, for cells in the body, they have a lifespan. So when they grow up and then they age, they're supposed to die. But cancer cells are basically rogue cells mm. decide that I won't die or I'll grow too fast. And then that's when cancers are formed. Mm. Now, usually we find that people only know about a few cancers like breast cancer, cervical yeah. cancer, yeah. prostate cancer. But the thing is that cancer can affect any part of your body. Mm -hmm. It can affect your eyes. <laughs> it can affect your eyes, your nails, like I was telling you earlier. You can get nail cancer. You could. Wow. It really just depends on the part of the body that decides to go rogue. So cancer can be at any part of your body. Let's just keep that in mind. Okay. Yes. As we go on. When you say any part of your body that decides to go rogue, is there a reason behind the cause of cancer in a particular person? Okay. Most of the time, for most cancers, we don't know what causes it. We only know a few risk factors. Okay. But there are some cancers that we know the causative orga um, organism for. Okay. So like something like um, cervical cancer, mm. we know that HPV causes it. Yeah. Throat cancer, we know HPV is implicated. And then um, Epstein-Barr virus, when you have retinoblastomas of the eye. Hey, now you're going to <laughs> <laughs> so most of, but for a large majority of cancers, yeah. we don't know what causes it. We only know some risk factors. So the best thing to do really is to manage those risk factors so that you don't get cancers. To manage those risk factors. Yes. Okay. Um, so let's just say, even before we go into breast cancer, cervical cancer, you have HPV. Yes. Does it mean automatically you can get cancer? No. Okay. So for cervical cancer, the good thing is that even after you get the HPV, it's only the persistent infection with high risk HPV oh. that will cause cervical cancer. Okay. Okay. And it takes about five to ten years before you get the cancer. That's why we are so big on getting people to get screened, get vaccinated, because we have like ten years mm. to prevent you from getting cancer. Okay. Okay, yeah. that's long enough. Is it the same for breast cancer as well? No. First of all, what causes breast cancer? Unfortunately, for breast cancer, we don't know exactly what causes it. It's mm. multifactorial, we would okay. say. So it really depends on whether you smoke, whether you drink alcohol, sometimes obesity is a factor. Okay. And we call something um, gene deletions and then some abnormal genes. For mm. some families, they have some genes, we call them BRCA genes. Okay. So if you have those genes, you are very likely to get breast cancer. Mm. But it's not just having a BRCA or smoking or obesity yeah. that makes you get breast mm. cancer. Most of the time, we don't even know what causes it. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes, I mean, all these factors could be missing in your life. Mm -hmm. and, and you could, you could still, get, still get breast cancer. Because there have been people who have been infected with breast cancer and didn't have any other family member, um, you know, mm -hmm. in the past mm -hmm. getting infected. Yeah, and it so, happens. It yeah. can happen. Okay, then that, that's a worry. But lifestyle, of course, is mm -hmm. a great... It's a big factor. Okay, so let's just say I don't smoke or I don't drink or do any of those things. Why then would I be infected? <sighs> like I said, <laughs> I know for breast yeah. cancer, it's really difficult. To it's tell. really, really difficult. Okay. So the best way, really, is to get screened. How often? Okay, 
So now, for people less than 40 years, we ask you to do self-breast examination. And mm. the thinking is that when you're familiar with your breast, you're able to know if there's any abnormality going on. Okay. You pick it up early, you go to a doctor, we do our investigations. If it's something that we need to further investigate and then treat you, mm. we will do it. Okay. But after 40 years of age, we usually recommend that you get a mammogram. Okay. So which is like an X-ray of your breast. Mm. The thinking really is that if we catch it early we are able to manage it we are able to sometimes achieve cure sometimes not all the time so it's not it depends it depends on the stage that you come in so there are stages yes okay can you please take me through <laughs> briefly i mean later on you know in the month okay. we'll go into it into details but if you mention stages we want to know okay what they are so stage from stage zero to stage five okay um this is really technical. Yeah, <laughs> it has yeah, yeah. to do okay. with the size of the lamp, whether there are lymph nodes involved, has okay. it spread to other parts of your body. Mm. But the point of staging is to be able to give you an appropriate treatment. Okay. You get it. All right. Yeah. Now let's come back to self-examination. I know there are videos online, people make fun of it. Mm -hmm. But it is important. Yes. If I don't know how to self-examine, how do I go about it? Can you just briefly run me through what I can do on my own in order to check for lumps? Okay. So first of all, we um, encourage that you become familiar with your breast. Okay. So once a month, for most women, we ask you to stand in front of a mirror, take off all your clothes, and then look at your breast. Look at the symmetry. Are they the same shape? Are they the same <laughs> Okay. My producer <laughs> wants me to use myself. <laughs> So, doctor, it's good that you are female. <laughs> Do you want to try with me? Okay. Teach me. Should we stand? Can we stand? Or we have to sit? Okay. All right. All right. So, you teach me what I, I, I should do if I'm standing in front of the mirror. Okay. So, let's just say you're my mirror. Okay. Okay. So, then I look at my breast. I have my clothes off. Let's, mm. let's, let's face it so they can see. Okay. So, I have my clothes off. And then I look at my breast. So, uh -huh. then I look from the top to mm. the bottom. And then I lift it and then try and look until I, and there it if there's anything going on. By there. just looking, not even touching? Yes. So first you look. Okay. So then you look at your breast. And then after that, you lie down. Oh. Put, yeah. Okay. <laughs> put um, your hand at the back of your neck. Like this. Yes. Okay. And then put two invisible lines in your breast. Let me help you. My, my producer says they can't really see. Sorry <laughs> if we're making you uncomfortable. Don't worry. That's I'm doing okay. everything that you're doing as well. That's okay. So like there are two invisible lines. One across the nipple like this, then one like that. Okay. And then with the tip of your fingers, okay, the first, um, these three fingers. Okay. You start to, you know, press it gently. Okay. Okay. So then you press. You do this whilst naked, by the way. Exactly. So you can't do this test with your bra on? No. No, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. okay. So then you go through all the four quadrants that you've divided imaginary. So I just press mm -hmm. like this. First, you press softly. Ah, and, feels then, good. and then firmly. Okay. And then you press the nipple area too. Press down like this. Yes. So then just press like that. Okay. This is a very gentle press, by the way. Okay. And then you press firmly. All okay. around. All right. Yes. Okay. And then don't forget the nipple. Okay. Then after that, you go on to your axillary region. That's the armpit area. Okay. And then you press along it. All the way into your armpits? Exactly. Because um, Why do you have to press your armpits as well? For some cases, okay, for cancer, sometimes yeah. you have lymph nodes. Okay. And some people have extra breast tissue along that area. Yeah. So we don't want to miss anything if you're examining. Okay. You okay. Yes. I've so heard that it's even more dangerous when you find it in your armpits. Is that true? Uh, it would just mean that it has started to progress and spread. Oh, when you find it here? Yes. So naturally, the lump should be in the breast? No. The lump can be anywhere. Okay. But then if you find anything here, we start thinking you have a lymph node. If you have a lymph node, it means that the cancer has started spreading. But sometimes there are lumps in your breast, and you can't really tell what is like uh -huh. a, a you know cancerous and what is not okay because naturally i can feel aj close your eyes a little <laughs> i can feel <laughs> that some is, lumps here and there that is just fibrous tissue and that's because you are young so for a lot of us young ones we have fibrous tissue that feels a little lumpy okay but if you have any confusion you just go to a doctor he examines you okay if he's not sure he'll let you do an ultrasound or a mammogram depending on your age so are you telling me that People above 50 don't have those natural lumps in their Most breast? Most people above 40 years, actually. Um, as you grow, uh -huh. your breast tissue is replaced by fatty tissue. So it's not oh. so fibrous anymore. You understand? Okay. Yes. Okay. I see. 
But anyways, I think you should try it. You don't always have to lie down to do this, right? You can still stand. It's better if after you do it, it's better if you just lie down. So you it can do all that and still control. lie down? Yes. And the moment I feel a lump, what should I do? Come to the hospital. Okay. Yes. Come and see a doctor. Do I yes. necessarily... Or does a it... nurse or a midwife who will examine you. If we think it's suspicious, we'll let you run some investigations. Okay. It's better to have a false um, positive than to have mm. um, a positive cancer yeah. that you missed because you thought there was nothing going so on. So one of my producers, Daniel Oklu, says that what he does for his girlfriend is he's heard <laughs> that if you suck a woman's nipple, uh -huh. it reduces her chances of getting breast cancer. So that's something he likes to do every morning. That's uh, wow, it. okay. <laughs> that's very detailed. <laughs> but the thing is that... Um, when I was talking about risk factors yeah. for um, breast cancer, I should have mentioned that there are some positive risk factors and negative ones. Okay. So if we say that for women who breastfeed, women mm. who have had a lot of children, they are less likely to get breast cancer. Okay. Because they are less exposed to estrogen and its effects. Mm. Now, with what Daniel said, oh, no, no, I I'm not too sure <laughs> about it really helps if someone is examining your breast. Okay. So in that line, yes, it could be, it could help that okay. he's examining. But sucking the different. nipple does not guarantee. No. There's no scientific Not that I'm aware of. Backing. Okay, not, not that, that you're I'm aware, aware of. of. No. Okay. So now I've noticed there's a lump. I've gone um, automatically. Can I get healed or do I have to go through processes? What are the okay. processes? So if you find a lump that we think is suspicious, first of all, we'll let you run... Um, an investigation okay so if you're young we let you do an ultrasound if you're old usually more than 40 years That's you, do you do a mammogram. mammogram yes oh what's the difference okay so an ultra because of how i mentioned the younger breast is more fibrous yeah. ultrasound is better for investigating ah, okay understand okay. but the mammograms are because of the fatty nature of adult breast is better to pick up suspicious lesions mm. now let me even mention before i forget that for every woman above 40 years we recommend that you get a mammogram every year every year so it's after 40 years we don't want you to sit at home and examine your breast and say oh i've examined and that's okay mm. Every year, get a mammogram. Okay. Because it's more sensitive than your fingertips anyway. Okay. Plus, it will show us if something very small has started. Mm. So that you don't wait for it to become bigger and then pick it up with your fingertips. Because that might be too late for you. Exactly. Okay. Now, there are some nipples that also um, leak. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people say it's normal if mm -hmm. you have some liquid coming out once in a while. But should you be worried about every kind of liquid that comes out from, especially when you are not a lactating mother? Okay, so before you even conclude that the leakage from your nipple is normal or not, go to a doctor. Okay. Let us see for ourselves whether we think it's normal. I thought it's only when it's brown or it smells foul that you should be worried. No. Okay. Once you have a nipple discharge, let's have a look. Let's see if we, it's something that we can stop. It's something that we can allow to continue first. Mm. And then after that, if you think it's suspicious, we'll go through the process for you. Mm. How long does a cancer take to grow? Does it have a particular time belt? Usually, or it differs with people? It really differs. And it depends on the type of cancer. Some cancers are very aggressive. Mm. Usually for breast cancer in younger women, like in their 20s or in their 30s, it's very aggressive, so it takes them fast. Hmm. Yes, it unfortunately, but some kinds of cancers can take years mm -hmm. before they take you know the person away if they don't get treatment. Mm. So and it's really important. And you won't feel any pain at all, even in the oh, yes. early stages. That's the other thing about breast cancer. Like more than ninety percent of the time, it's not painful. It's just a lump that you will probably ignore if you don't have you know the knowledge about it. Hmm. Yes. Okay. So you don't feel. At what point do you start feeling pains when it becomes cancerous? Even after it becomes cancerous, sometimes it's not painful. What? Mm -hmm. And so then how are you going to know? If you, I mean, let's say you don't know that you have it. There's no pain, nothing, and you're home. Mm -hmm. At what point would you realize that something is wrong? If you have a lump. So first of all, you have to know your breast. Okay. Before you can pick up any abnormalities, you have to know this is my normal breast texture and consistency. So then if it starts changing, if you see any skin changes, if, you know, it just, even if it's just heavy, and it's not related to your period, come in, let's have a look. Like we keep saying that it's really better to come and waste my five minutes mm -hmm. <laughs> where there was nothing wrong than yeah. for you to waste the rest of your life because you thought you were just, you know. Can, can it recare? Yes. Let's say I found a lump, I've gone to the mm -hmm. hospital, they've taken the lump out. Am I fine forever okay. or would, could it come back? The question is, was the lump cancerous or was it benign? 
Cancerous okay. just means that it can spread. It has potential to kill you. Okay. Benign can stay for a long time and really not do much to you. Mm. Um, whether benign or cancerous, it can recur. Mm -hmm. But the point is to be able to, you know, catch it early. I keep saying catch it early, catch it early, because yeah. it's so important and we take it for granted. Hmm. Yeah. This is scary. And anyway, good morning to anyone who is watching and also sending messages. You can join us um, on our social media pages at TV3 Ghana or at Berla Moody Hive. Stars Lingerie says that let's help our youth to take care of their breasts and change their bras and their panties. Some people believe that when you wear your bra to sleep, mm -hmm. first of all, it makes your boobs perkier, you know, prevents it from falling. And also, secondly, it helps prevent breast cancer. Is that true? Because some people say the kind of bras that you wear could also cause breast cancer. Is that true? Okay. I haven't come across any scientific paper that mm -hmm. said that wearing bras or a certain kind of bra can cause breast cancer. Okay. Yeah. What I do know is that, I mean, keeping your breast packed the whole day, it really is not helpful. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not helpful in, in what sense? First of all, you don't allow your muscles to, you know, do the job they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So it could actually lead to some sort of sagging. But okay. there, there isn't even so much evidence in regards to that. Okay. You get it. So when it comes to brass and then whether or not to wear brass, I, I leave that argument. Mm. But when it comes to implications about wearing brass and breast cancers, I haven't come across any paper. At that all. Says that. No. I so does breast cancer also lead to all the um, you know, symptoms that regular cancer leads to? So yes. let's say losing my hair and having to undergo chemo and all that. Is that <laughs> really how it's like? So let's talk about treatment for yeah. breast cancer. Yeah. So if we find that you have a cancer and after we stage it, it will show us how to treat you. Mm -hmm. Some people are okay with just removal of the lump and then some chemotherapy or radiation. Okay. Okay. But for some other people, we have to remove the whole breast mm. and then do both chemotherapy and then radiation. Some people don't need radiation therapy at all. Okay. Now, most of the falling out of hair and then nose getting dark usually is because of the high doses of chemotherapy that we use to kill the cancer. Mm. So it's not just the cancer that causes you to lose your hair or all of that. Sometimes it's the side effects of the chemo. Okay. But after chemotherapy, most of the time the hair grows back, your nails get better. Oh, okay. So it's really for a short period, but period it's really time. painful. So We I can seem understand. to be leaving the men out. Are they also prone to breast cancer? Yes. In fact, about 1% of breast cancer cases are found in men, and okay. those are also highly aggressive. Okay. So even though we don't routinely tell men to examine their breast, if you find anything abnormal around your breast area, your nipple area, you should have it checked. So do they also have to do the same kind of test? Or for, because they don't have... <laughs> Not as often. Not oh. as often. I mean, once in a while, it doesn't hurt to just pass your hand over For your, a man as exactly, well. Exactly, just to see. And you can person. actually feel the lumps on a man's... Yes, sometimes you can. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I see that. Okay, then don't worry. I'll come and test you as well <laughs> for you. But I've had in the studios Priscilla up here, and she's a medical doctor and also runs Papi's, Papi's Cervical Cancer Initiative. Okay, all right. Yeah. We'll get to that discussion maybe <laughs> later on. But thank you so much. And advice to everybody who's watching before you go. Okay, so this month is um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and there are so many hospitals and clinics that are offering free breast screenings. I think everybody should take advantage of that. And then get yourself screened even if it's not you take your mother take your sister take your friends stay safe definitely stay safe and continue to smile because you're free from breast cancer that's it for the health segment send your comments in we'll read them before the end of the show but thank you so much doctor